So, in the last time since I made the first video on this canister filter, the uh, bulkhead fitting on my um, on my uh, first bucket cracked at the top, and um, it looks like uh, if I used it even more, it'd probably crack some more. So what I did was I ordered another one. It seems to be pretty much of the same quality, and uh, I can now get started now that I have the uh, replacement bulkhead fitting. But I'll make sure when I do this that I don't screw the male adapter into the bulkhead fitting too much so that it'll crack it again. Try to figure out a way how to uh, make sure that doesn't happen again. All right, so let's take a, a pretty much thoroughly explained how the first bucket is gonna work. So I had a little bit of progress with the second bucket. So um, here is the pipe that will connect through to the top of the first bucket. So again, it'll come up over and connect into this. And um, I have the lid here for the second bucket. So here is the return pipe, which will go into the tank. And what I have here is um, some silicone, which I'll use to seal the uh, uniseal, quarter inch uniseal that I have, which is then uh, how I've strung through my um, DC pump. Also what I have here is uh, some silicone faucet grease. So each one of these lids has a rubber seal um, in it. And I'll show you what the rubber seal looks like. So there's the rubber seal. So what I'll go ahead and do is uh, apply a thin coat of that silicone faucet grease on it just to make sure that I have a complete airtight seal um, on my seals. And uh, the whole reason why I need that is because this is a canister and it needs to be airtight. Otherwise, if air seeps through these seals as the pump, which is in the second bucket, displaces the water from the bucket, returns it back into the tank, it needs to displace um, the water that it's returning back to the tank with water that it's pulling from the first bucket and of course the first bucket is siphoning water from the tank into uh, my, se my separation chamber and into my mechanical filters. If that's not water tight, as the water exits out of this bucket, it'll be displaced by water. At some point in time, all that water would just be blown out and be displaced by air. There would be no filtration going on and that's not what we want. So let's take a look at the second bucket. Okay, so for the second bucket, what I have is another one and one quarter inch uniseal coming out of the top. And uh, what I made sure to do was, uh, because of the way how my pump is situated, um, I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't move it too far off to the side, otherwise the pump wouldn't go into the, into the bucket. Um, also, I wanted to be a little bit off-center so that um, I don't have to leave this bucket directly underneath the, the tank. So uh, it's a little bit off center and that's by design. So what I have here again is a quarter inch uniseal which contains the wire for my DC pump. So also I have here a zip tie. The purpose of the zip tie is so that if the wire ever gets tugged on, it doesn't slip and slide through the uniseal. So it's acting as a stop. And I have one placed here and another one placed on the bottom. And um, I'll use the silicone sealant to seal this up because uh, this wire actually is perfectly slides into the diameter inside the uniseal. So it doesn't push on the inside edge of the uniseal. And so therefore it doesn't create that tight seal here. So um, I'm forced to use the silicone sealant. It simply doesn't work enough on its own. Suppose I could have gotten three sixteenths uniseals, but um, it would have been very difficult to uh, try to jam this wire through that um, since it's not solid. All right. So here's a uh, my J bow pump, and um, I tested this earlier, and it still works, which is good. And uh, as you can see there, the uh, the pipe just goes into the center. There's no stand pipe. The water is just simply going to fill up from the bottom. Um, 
as it fills up, the pump will pull the water back into the tank. So I mentioned earlier um, in the last post that uh, some people tend, when they build their own DIY canister filters, to put the pump outside of the canister chamber um, because they, are, they hadn't figured out how to wire um, the electrical wire of the pump inside the uh, canister filter. So let's grab the other end of my um, DIY pump. So uh, this here is the controller and there's a DC connector that then plugs into the wall and that contains the DC adapter. Um, this wire which comes out of the bucket unscrews from the controller here. So there it unscrews, this cap unscrews it, now I can pull this apart. And then there it is. Okay, but if you look at this still, this is still too big to fit in that hole. So you may ask how I got that wire through that small hole. And the answer is, you simply cut the cord. And um, there's a couple of ways that you could do it to uh, reconnect this back together. You can actually buy an external wire connector. You can use wire crimp cutters. But what I did was after I cut the cords, I um, stripped some of the wire back after I threaded this through completely. And I soldered it back together. And I used some heat shrink just to make it look nice. So. You know, from far away, you'd probably never be able to notice that this was wire was able to cut apart and reassembled, but that's how it's done. So unfortunately, um, this wasn't manufactured where this plug could have came off in such a way that would have made it easier for people like us that like to tinker with things, but sometimes a little bit of surgery is required, and this wasn't too difficult to do. So that's how it's done, and again, the recommendation is if you have an aquarium sump pump, don't run it dry because it's gonna get hot, it's electrical. The water helps to cool that pump. Keeping it completely submerged is going to extend the life of the pump. And um, also, since this is a canister, there's always that possibility that it'll leak. And uh, you don't want that leaking, that pump to break and leak out into your floor. So um, these two chambers are completely sealed. So, um, Someone had asked whether um, I'm concerned about pressure in this. And the fact of the matter is, I don't think there's gonna be any pressure at all. The water is simply going to go down the intake pipe by gravity and then be fed into the next pump also by gravity because the tank is up above. But when there is pressure, it's gonna come from the pump. But I have it situ situated in such a way where the pump is in the second canister but the, the turn on the pump goes up through this pipe back into the tank so if there's any pressure at all in the system it's only in the pipe so it won't hit the walls of the pump or walls of the canister or anything like that so i believe it should be fine and um someone had mentioned to me maybe adding an easy uh, uh something to make it a little bit more easy to remove the solids that settle at the bottom of the first settling chamber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole for a half inch uniseal towards the back of the can first canister. And I'll put in a half inch pipe. As soon as it goes into the canister, I'll have that pipe go straight down towards the bottom. And then from there, I'll tee it off so that there's sort of like a, a small cross at the bottom. And then on the outside, I will have a, a ball valve attached to the pipe that comes out. And when I open the ball valve, what it'll then do is siphon off from the bottom of the tank any water that's in there, and hopefully it'll pick up some of the solids. Also, as it siphons it off, it should be able to backwash a little bit uh, against the mechanical filters and pull off any um, solids that have trapped on the mechanical filters shouldn't do a great deal um, in terms of cleaning the mechanical filters. It'll just pull off a little bit 
to uh, maintain my mechanical filters. It's simply best to just do the thorough cleaning, but it should provide for a little bit of, uh, of uh, self-maintenance, which is cool. So now that I have uh, my new bulkhead fitting, um, I'm going to reuse this rubber washer from the original one, since these bulkhead fittings only come with one. And uh, I'll have a rubber washer both on the top and on the bottom. And I'll use this ring and I'll screw it down towards the and leave it on the top so that uh, uh, when I screw the male adapter in, it doesn't split the uh, bulkhead fitting, which uh, should help. But that's that. Um, there was a little bit of delay in getting this going because of the uh, cracked bulkhead fitting. I had to wait for the new one to come in the mail. And it came in on Friday, which was yesterday. So I'm pretty excited to get this going. Hopefully it'll get going through this weekend. So um, that's about it.